what the Strike Force, UFC, and martial art action films have in common. Coming up. Coming from Vietnam to America, um, yeah. it's it's definitely been uh, challenging for me. I, you know, I am um, uh, I came to America as a refugee. Yeah. I went to uh, I was in three different refugee camps. So in the Philippines, uh, I, I left a week before the fall of Saigon. Um, uh, you know, basically, um, my grandfather was chief of police, and he. Um, he got us on a, you know, a, a helicopter out of there. Uh, basically, the government says that they can't protect us anymore, and we have two hours to come back. And every single person with one suitcase, and it had to be a certain size one suitcase. So wow. my grandfather rushed home, got everyone, got our one suitcase, and we we're off. And then flew to Philippines, uh, refugee camp for three months there. Then um, refugee camp. For you know, a couple weeks in Guam, and then we stayed in Monterey. Um, was our last stop for uh, I can't remember exactly how long, but we were in a refugee camp there. Then we picked up a sponsor, and then from there, my grandfather got uh, you know up, uh, you know, got on his feet after about five or six months, and then uh, ended up uh, getting a house in San Jose. And we were that typical family where you know four. Uh, four of my uncles were in one room. My mom and her sisters were in, and myself were in another room. I had my great grandmother in her own room, and my grandpa, my gra- my granddad, and my uh, my grandma uh, was in 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 their room. So four rooms with a with a whole bunch of people, you know. So wow. Um, uh, so it was uh, even my cousin also lived with us. So that that was a uh, it was crazy, but um. You know, I, I think it helped mold me to be the person I am. And How do you keep going uh, at your age uh, in terms of training, like sparring, weight training, hit training, nutrition? Um, if you can touch on that. How I'm able to continue to train at a high level and yep. uh, even perform in my sparring or in uh, my bag work or whatever I'm doing and people yep. still enjoy watching me throw kicks or do things is because I take really good care of myself. My body is my temple. You know, God bless me with this body. So I have to make sure I, I give it the best nutrition. I give it the right rest and I honor the body because I'm honored to have a life and to have a soul and to have a choice. And I know what I do with my choices will determine hap- what, what happens in my soul. So, you know, I, you know, on, on the spiritual level, and on the physical level and on the mental level, you all have to combine, combine it together. You know, you were talking about eating clean uh, prior to this, like eating organically uh, and also bringing it back from, you know, just a, a natural lifestyle. And you were also talking about taking cold showers. So if you could talk about that. Every morning I, when I wake up, I, I jump right in and very rarely do I, you know, enjoy a hot shower. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I, I jump right in to a cold shower. And I'm throwing punches. Like by the time I'm done with my shower, I'm clean. I got my hair washed and I got soap and I'm I'm done. But I also throw I I've th- I I'm able to th- throw fast punches in, in in different combos. So on both sides, my right side, my left side. So nice. I'm averaging every time I jump in the shower, I'm averaging between two to three hundred punches. Because wow. the wa- the water takes a little bit longer to to heat up in the mornings, and yeah. when when I jump in there and and then at night before I go to sleep, I jump in for for a cold shower too, and then uh, you know I, it it it's like it's it's very soothing to my the, the muscles as you know, you know over the years of training, you know yeah. you mentioned something about your elbow. I've had the, yeah. I, I I had three elbow surgeries on this elbow. Wow, and, and I, I can see the stitches on this, there. Yeah, uh, two on this. So it, yeah. it's, you know, it's it's because I've I've learned from like school of hard knocks. I learned the hard way, so I'm trying to not make the same mistakes. So it's all about recovery. Yeah. As hard as I train, 
I have to put almost the same amount of recovery time in. Um, when you first meet your partners, you know that they like to go hard or they like to go, you know, whatever pace that they want to go. You just got to make sure you don't hurt them and they don't hurt you, you know. And then that's how both parties, you know, uh, get better. You know, iron sharpens iron, you know. But if you're, you know, going all out, then you're just going to hurt your partner or you, your partner's going to hurt you, you know. So, um, yep. you know, I, I'm very selective with my training partners. You know, um, you know, I have to maintain a certain uh, level. So I try to get in like one sparring session a week. Then I'm also flow sparring with my son. He's a beast. He's 16. You know, he's up and yeah. coming, you know, so. And then, uh, you know, and then he has two training partners that are seniors right now. And, uh, you know, I, I just got to make sure, you know, I'm I'm in good enough shape so I don't hurt them. And then, uh, you know, and at the same time, I'm able to give them the rounds that pushes their lungs and, and uh, you know, my movement. And so I don't get hit, you know, so that's kind of like, yeah, yeah, that's like my philosophy on how I can improve when I'm training someone like at a lower level than I am, you know, so I can yeah. benefit as well. As a, I'm 52. How, how, how often do you train during the week? And uh, what would you recommend in terms of like weight training and, and technical stuff? Well, you know, like if, if I was just a normal person with a normal job, so yeah. I would wake up before I, I even, you know, um, get in the shower and I would yeah. do some kind of training, at least a good 30 minutes. Right. Then when I yeah. come home from work, I would, you know, get a, a quick training in before I finish the rest of my night off, right? So yeah. I would try to get in like twice a day, but like whether it's 30 twice. minutes or even 15 yeah. minutes, you know, I'm yeah. doing something. That that's just me, right? And yeah. on days that I'm uh, that I'm gonna rest, I I I do active rest, whether I'm stretching, but like uh, me now, I'm training four or five times every single day but like some wow. training tr some training sessions or 10 or 15 yeah. minutes i'm just in there stretching yeah. i'm doing sides uh, side swings to just like i'm holding onto like a counter or my couch and i'm doing slow side kicks you know i'm holding nice. my side kicks then i'm doing side yeah. swings then of course in the in the morning i'm i'm at least i get five minutes of uh, shadow boxing in the shower like at oh, a nice. fast pace i pick three yeah. combos of three punches and i throw them you know like you know 40 times on one side 40 times on the other side nice. i kind of dedicate that to like like god would do everything in 40s right 40 days 40 nights no nice you know so yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. kind of like what i do you know so um and of course my diet is uh you know even my weak my weakness is like these uh peanut butter cups but they're all GMO <laughs> chocolate, free, um, organic <laughs> yeah, chocolate, me. organic yeah, peanut yeah. butter, and it has yep. nine grams of protein, you know? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. I, uh, yeah. I got a, I got a, a friend. Uh, he, he wanted me to ask you this. Uh, he's my, he's one of my coaches, uh, Sifu Vas. Shout out to Sifu Vas. He's my JKD instructor. He wanted me to ask you about timing because we're, we're, uh, he's in his late forties. I'm in my fifties. I've seen your, 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 your training and your sparring. Your timing's still there, man. What specifically do you do to keep your, your reaction time? Well, you know, I, I do a lot of uh, uh, a spar bar. And, and uh, ah, you know, okay. I actually have the newer Bob, you know. Okay. Uh, where his, he's got arms out, right? So, uh, like, what I do is I don't kick the Bob because he flies, <clears> like, <throat> off because the, you need a lot of sand. You, uh, even all the weights I put down there, he, I still knock, I, I, yeah. I knock Bob around. But So I'm kicking the tip of his arms. You know, yeah. and then I, I do a lot of paddle drills, like the taekwondo paddle drills. And then, yep. of course, um, it's been a while since I've had a double end bag because uh, I got to get a new one. My double end bag kind of got deflated, I think, between me and my son beating it up. And you busted we just, it. <laughs> we just haven't got a chance to uh, replace it yet. But like a double end and or a cobra reflex bag is, is, is key. But right now I'm doing a lot of spar bar. I literally probably do the spar bar like six six days a week you know um i get up and uh you know like before i do something before i go out in the public i would just hit the spar bar for a couple minutes to get the timing in get my yeah. muscles all locked in spar just bar. in case of a fight or, flight uh, a fight or flight situation yeah 
Yeah, I was I was looking at that. Um, I to be honest, I never knew about that 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 kind of thing existed until I saw your videos. And it's pretty cool because you can hit it; it swings back. It forces you to. to cover, and the right? faster you hit it, the faster it swings back. And don't don't get the spar bar mixed with the boxing bag. There's a lawsuit going on in that, and of course, you know really? the spar bar is is the like the like the cream of the crop, um, you know, tool. Yeah, you I'll hit it, it out, man. I can throw kicks at it. You know, um, I can, can kick it too. It, right? it, it, it actually sp it has sped up my hands, and now I'm hitting not just at where the 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 bar is swinging back. I'm hitting the bag. I'm hitting the bar that is like up and down. Of course, you make sure you wear gloves. So not, when I'm slipping, I would come and hit a two or three punch combo to the body. Would 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 be like realistically, I'm hitting the bar, but I'm hitting that that's that would go to the like sword flex or the, 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 the gut area, then I would come up and, you know, hit, like hit the ball, which would be the head. And then the arm would swing around. I would either block it or lean back away from it. So the spar bar yeah. has a lot of good um, uh, benefits from hand and eye, from yeah. speed drills. And the faster you go, the faster it moves. So That's cool, that, man. That, that will push your cardio no problem, of course. And then I got my my Punch King bag, which is over there. Oh, sweet. And uh, that has all the grooves. So it's like hitting focus mitts when you're hitting a bag, you know? So, yeah. yeah, so yeah those yeah. are the tools I use for, for my timing. Nice, nice. What are some of the things you do to keep your training functional? And if you can talk about your tactical experience too, like what you do at Barrier Tactical and how you – weave in self-defense in there into your training well i think um ever since i finished um um you know my fighting career uh, with the ufc uh, but before that i i got a chance to go out to virginia beach i trained with the uh, seal seal team six uh in virginia beach you know the go team uh there was one team missing because they were deployed there's four teams total but they rotate every three months uh, back then that's how it worked and I went out there, and um, uh, the friend who got me out there um, asked if I like to shoot guns. And, you know, I said, sure, I, lo I love to shoot guns. I really didn't shoot much uh, except the 22 and a shotgun. So he took me out to most of their ranges and let me shoot every single gun except the only gun that I didn't get a chance to, uh, to shoot is a 50 caliber, you know. And wow. I shot pretty much everything else, the vector, yeah. you know, the saw. Um, so, um uh, from there, I just got into guns. I met I met Taryn Butler, who trains Keanu Reeves for John Wick. You know, right, uh, I, right, I, I started training way before John Wick. You know, John Wick One came out. You know, so yeah. Um, uh, I I I I, I um, introduced my buddy JJ Perry, who's from um, uh, what do you call it, eighty seven eleven. You know, to the that range, and then uh, you know, from there, you know, um, John Wick comes in and. And trains and you know um i trained with taryn for like four four and a half to five years but at the same time i'm always open-minded my teacup's always half half empty so I'm, yeah. I'm learning from a lot of different tactical guys from swat to tier one guys to delta to green berets to navy seals so i've trained with a lot of different guys and you know got a chance to learn a lot and then of course you know at, we're as as martial artists if you put a knife in your hand in a reverse grip and you're throwing combinations at someone, you know, you don't need to learn the path of the blade. You should. So, you know, if someone else has a blade, how the blade's going to come at you so you can defend it. But if you are, if you've done a cardio kickboxing class or a boxing class and you put a reverse knife in your hand yeah. and you're throwing punches and you're slicing at the same time, you're going to be more effective and you're going to give your, your, yourself a better opportunity and a better percentage of surviving an attack because you have a big ass kitchen blade if you had to, you know, and, and you're yeah. fighting and you're throwing punches. Look how more deadly your punches come now, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. So the, the, the use of weapons, the knowledge of weapons, uh, knife and gun. Um, and just, I noticed you do, you do some hand to hand tactical stuff too. So very different from, from sports stuff. So like how, how, what are some changes have you made in, in your training to make it functional? First of all, like when I teach people, right, it's not like yeah. you can learn to 
defend yourself in a weekend class, right? You you can't get certified. Right. I, I know there's st- different system out there that certify their people. Oh, you train, uh, you know, uh, in a weekend. Now you're certified, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a different system. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to mention any, but like you can't, you have to like, as m- m- look how long I've been doing martial arts, look how long you've been doing martial arts and still, yep. It's a never-ending process. So again, if you're in the shower, yeah. you're throwing punches for five minutes, whether it's hot water or cold water, you're doing something a day, in like every single day. So if you're out there, your natural reaction will be mm. your muscles throwing punches with or without a blade, right? So, right. so at least you're doing something every day, right? Now, yeah. if you're not, your natural reaction will be flinch and close your eyes and hold up your hands because you don't want that attacker to hit you in the face. Now, if yeah. you're training and you do something five or ten minutes every single day, your yeah. your muscles will react different because it's it it's already been programmed in there. Right. Throw right, this, right, right. boom, 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 and next thing you know, you might have closed your eyes and thrown some combos and maybe hit him or or her, whoever's attacking you. And then you've given yourself a better opportunity to survive that that moment. Muscle muscle memory. My takeaway from that from that conversation piece there is is muscle memory. So keep training, as you say. Keep doing something and 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 get used to understanding weapons too. You know, if if you need it. Let's me to my next question. Uh, cross training. What what's your take on that? Uh, like uh, learning learning multiple styles. I know you came from a from a traditional background, you know, Taekwondo, Vietnamese Kung Fu, San Shou. Um, and what's your take on, 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 on learning different things and, and, and integrating them? If you don't evolve, you become extinct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, remember Amen. when someone, te- when someone teaches you a style, it's not the style that makes, uh, you know, that's any better than any, uh, the other style. It's, it's the person behind the style. Right. And it's the person who's got the open mind, got the half tea or an empty teacup. If so, you want to use that. But remember, half teacups mean you have what you have as in your knowledge, as in your skills, your athletic abilities. Now, that half teacup that's empty, fill it up, fill it up with knowledge, learn, improve. And one day, hopefully you don't have to use it, but you have all the tools to to use it at the same time be open open up your mind so you know when to use it and you know not to use it you know or you know how to use it you know so yeah. there's just it's it's a uh, it's a uh, it's 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 not just like throw a punch why do you throw the punch you know yeah what if you miss the punch what are you gonna do you know there's there's all kinds of different scenarios. And if you put yourself in these different scenarios and you think about it, then you can react when these scenarios truly happen. So at, at, uh, at B area tactical, do you, do you do like uh, apart from uh, you're an instructor there from, from what I understand you, you yeah, teach I'm, I'm a, courses there? I'm an, I'm an instructor and a partner there. Yeah. Oh, nice. And, uh, well, if you could just briefly tell us what are some of the programs you, you run there? Uh, right now I, I'm, I've taught, um, a lot of basic pistol one and mm-hmm. I've, uh, I've done, uh, a good handful of, uh, pistol two and then advanced, uh, advanced pistol and, uh, you know, shotgun or, uh, or AR where they, they learn uh, how to use three guns, uh, and move and, and shoot, uh, with, uh, their sidearm or their AR or their shotgun. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, one of one of your uh, one of your followers, uh, Van Luang one 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 six, wanted to ask you, what's your favorite gun? Uh, my it's I, I have my favorite handgun, and I have my favorite. Yeah. Um, well, it, uh, my my favorite gun, uh, uh, play um, the Terran Tactical Combat Master. Uh, nice. He he uh, gifted me that, and and uh, you know so. Um, that and then my uh, uh, my custom Glock that was made by Bishop um, uh, Bishop Arms and he's uh, the, the, the 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 he's he, he has a gun shop. His name is Evan, and, and yep. uh, he custom me my Glock 17, and it's uh, like the grip, 
the the slide, you know, uh, the trigger. It's all custom. So uh, that's nice. that's my uh, that's the gun that I I carry around. My yeah, like, you yeah. know, the the other one is just more like, uh, you know, the Combat Master because John Wick used it in the movie. And <laughs> I got it and it shoot the trigger yeah. is super light, but that's more like if I if I ever competed, I would definitely use that gun. You know. Nice. Quick question on on form on forms uh, forms training. Like, what, what's your take on kata and forms training? Uh, do you see do you see a place for it in your training? Uh, Remember, I, I came from a take? traditional background. Uh, yeah. So so I did a lot of forms, but I, I feel yep. that uh, it helps, uh, you know, technique. But for me, um, I don't find it useful uh, in the modern day. You know, I I find getting right into um, striking the double end bag, the heavy bag, the punch king bag, the spar bar, and then, uh, you know, uh, working with the partner, whether it's a drills for self-defense and um, angles and, um, you know, setups and defense is more important than putting together a form, um, which, uh, you know, a form uh, is a great exercise and, and it, it's good for, you know, muscle memory, but I think that if you're doing combat uh, yeah. for self-defense, it's uh, it's best to to train as if you were in the situation, you know, yeah. with the yeah. partner, with conditioning your knuckles, conditioning your palm, conditioning your forearms, because those are all the elements that you're going to be using to save your life. You know, yeah. take nothing yeah. away from the forms. It helps you maneuver the sword. It gives you the right, proper strikes. But unless you're willing a sword at someone, if you're willing a spear or a yeah. double sigh, you know, then great. But are you sparring with it? Now, doing it to the air, it's like shadow boxing. You still need yeah. that contact. You need that contact. So, you know, what you spend your time, because the time is limited now. You know, right. As as you see some dojos, you take your kids in and your the the class is done in thirty to forty five minutes. What can they really learn? You know. So if you're gonna spend the time with your kids, teach them how to strike. Let them feel the impact. You know, and hopefully they get some sparring in so they don't flinch under the pressure. You know. So yeah, that's that's my take on forms. I I don't do forms anymore. I used to yeah. do a lot of forms. I got my black belt in taekwondo because I had good form, you know. And I probably couldn't put the, the my blue belt form on to my black belt form because I don't remember it. But look how good my technique is because I do yeah, my techniques. Yeah. I am that guy that you know. Don't worry about the 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 the, the fighter that throws you know. A, a thousand uh, different kicks one time. Worry about the the fighter throwing that thousand kick, uh, the, that one kick one time. But I'm that fighter. I'll throw five different kicks a thousand times to 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 get it right. You know. Yeah. I will, I will. I will do it. So and I don't spend the time doing forms. I spend the time doing repetitions to different bags during sparring. So I'm getting it in. So that's why my striking and my kicks are so, uh, you know, uh, fun to watch because they're there for me. I can, I can, I can depend on them, you know, in almost every situation. And this, this is, this is perfect to ask you this next question. It's, it's all about what we were talking about. Um, what would, what would you suggest, uh, be your, uh, your top go-to, go-to solo training techniques if you're trained on your own? Well, of course, my spar bar, my uh, spar bar, yeah, my punch king bag, um, and then uh, uh, just sh- like shadow boxing, shadow Whether boxing, throwing punches, dropping down to a single leg, shooting to nice. a, for a double, even coming out the back door, you know, and following up, you know. So yeah. it's it's uh, or even in my showers, my hands speed yeah, like yeah, yeah. faster. Because every morning I'm throwing five minutes of punches, so yeah, that, I gotta try that, man. I, I I do that sometimes, but it's not it's not regular, and I don't. I'm too scared of turning on the cold water. <laughs> you got to, but uh, and and you yeah. you'll, yeah, you'll feel a lot better 
with your muscles when you do that, you know? But how cold is cold, bro? Are we talking like, like no hot water at all? Frigid full cold? on, full oh. on cold, man. Oh, you're gonna kill me, bro. It's it's better than an ice bath, trust me. Really? I'm, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try right. it. I'll try it today. I'll try it today. But uh, all right, so we're gonna get on to our next uh, category: uh, teaching and coaching martial arts. I mean, I'm a dad, uh, and I'm a martial art coach too. Um, and I just wanted to know uh, how do you how do you teach beginners all the way up to your advanced students? Like when, say for example, uh, you know, at your academy or when you do seminars, like what's your what's your training teaching or your teaching method? It's all about foundation, yeah. foundation, foundation, right? Just like. Um, uh, if you you give them their basic jab, cross, hook, uppercut, their basic yeah. front kick, roundhouse, side kicks, and you just give them those punches in different scenarios, whether it's on mm. a double end, whether it's on a punch king bag, whether it's on a you know spar bar, and and you yeah. or you're holding mitts for them, or you're holding tie pads for them, you make them go over it until they know it. Until it comes out naturally, then when it comes out naturally, you got their foundation down right, and then yeah. then then you start adding more more techniques to it, you know. So yeah, yeah. So you start with the basics, and you just kind of add, add start layers. with the basic yeah. and add layers. Yeah. You you coach your sons, um, and I tried to coach my daughter, but uh, I I can't formally put her in her class, you know, because she doesn't. She just can't deal with all, all of that training. So I just play with her, right? But I just want to know. I mean, I, I've seen footage of, of, of your sons, and they're beasts. Um, like one of them, I think, is a collegiate wrestler or something like that. Yeah, Anthony, and, he's uh, uh, a sophomore in high school, and he's oh, a nice. stud wrestler. But remember, it's, it's not about what they want to do at first because you we are the parent. So we yeah. control what they want to do, right? Uh, so if <laughs> yeah. if if you put the, like the boss shoes on them, they're gonna control it. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Well, yeah, you don't have a choice. Yeah, you're living under my roof. If Love you don't that. like it, then you're. <laughs> I'll just take your Xbox or I'll take whatever. Yeah. Or if yeah. you don't want to do that. Yeah. There's the mop. There's the vacuum. <laughs> you know, maybe yeah. if you do that with me. Yeah. Then I will help you. You vacuum 75% of the house and I'll vacuum the other 25%. Whoa, but I'm really teaching you, it. I'm teaching you a skill set that you yeah. will need. I said, yeah. every this this is what I tell my my kids, right? All the parents want the best education in the world for their kids. Most at least 99% of the parents, maybe even less. Yeah, man. So um I want to talk about your UFC, UFC strike force stint. I mean, you're, you're, you're out of that now, but do you miss it? Do you get an itch still? Or like, what's come on? Is it long gone? Like what's, what's happening? Come on. <laughs> I miss it like crazy. You know? Yeah. Um, at one time I was getting paid to punch people in the face and get punched yep. in the face myself, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we, as, as the modern day kind of gladiators that UFC fighters and MMA fighters are, you know, we, we got to be a little, you know, uh, 51, 50, you know, so you got to be a little crazy, you know? So, yeah. um, yeah, I totally miss it. I miss it. But, you know, I, I, I know that, you know, when I hung it up, even though I fought like Michael Bisbing and a year, what, a year later he becomes UFC champion. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I probably had a few more, but then I ended up, you know, taking the opportunity to fight for 1,200 fighters in a class action lawsuit against the UFC. So I'm yeah. representing 1,200 fighters and the, the future of the mixed martial arts and combat sports. So as yeah. you see, it's 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 me and a group of guys, but on the docks, it's, it says Kung Lee versus UFC. Your best, most memorable fight? Uh, my best, most memorable fight would, I would have to say against uh, Frank Shamrock. And Shamrock, the second eh? one yeah. would have to be, uh, you know, Rich Franklin. So, Franklin, eh? Yeah. Why, why is that? Well, uh, you know, uh, for against um, Frank Shamrock, I was, you know, I was uh, at the top of my game. I was in great shape, uh, even though I had like 21 stitches on my mouth from a movie that I did like um, three and a half weeks before the before the fight. Um, 
I, I was in such great shape. Actually, when I did take a week off to film this movie called Tekken, just because I love martial law, the, the character, and I got to play him. Yeah. Um, even though the experience on the movie set wasn't what I expected, I got a chance to play martial law, and I took that opportunity to do it. And uh, that week actually helped me to recover because even though I brought Javier Mendez out to where I was uh, filming, and, and uh, we got a chance to hit pads like four out of the – you know, seven days I was there and, and um, um, I I got a chance to recover and I came into a fight where I felt really good. I, I wasn't tired. Um, my I was getting stronger each round. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I took some I took some damage in the, the third round, but I recovered real quick. I think I broke his will and I broke yeah. his arm, you know, so I remember that. I, I, yeah, yeah. So and, and then with Rich Franklin, I was just. I was a mess. You know, I had elbow surgery six weeks before the yep. fight. Um, I remember you know, that. Yep. Everything was wrong. I had, you know, when I came home after the fight, I had, I had to get elbow surgery again on the same elbow and on the other elbow, you know. So yep. um, it was just a, a rough time for me. Um, but, you know, I was able to pull it off because um, faith. I just yeah. said, oh, you know what, God, you know, I, I, I have faith I'm going to win. And I went out there and I won. Amazing. And, uh, you know, um, so, sometimes you believe you're going to win and you don't. Like, I believe I was going to beat uh, Michael Bisbee. But, you know, it actually, when I learned that about myself in that fight is, will I quit? Well, I quit when I got my eye hit. I mean, it was like the worst pain that I ever felt. I felt like throwing up and diarrhea at the same time. Wow. And then this whole side was like fuzzy. Like, I couldn't see out of this side at all. It was like, like like it was like a broken tv you know and then I, wow. I, I told myself early in the second round wow that was that's the worst pain i ever felt getting hit and then uh i remember i going back to the to the corner after the second round and i was like man i i can't you know i can't see but i knew you know the uh scott Sheely who was working my corner he would like right away throw in the towel because my safety right and i'm on fine yeah you know then wow then after the third round i came back and i'm like who and he's a uh, man your face is really bad maybe we should stop it and i'm like no way we're not gonna stop yeah. it i'm gonna go out on my shield and, and you know and we had that rocky moment where you know they came and i said because we got a little little argument at that moment i said you you throw in the towel um, we're no longer friends right you wow. make sure I, i'm still in this fight and that when when they came and they 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 my good eye i was able to still see you know how many fingers they had but then when they covered my good eye and i couldn't really see he had to pad me four times and i said four and so uh, like, how did wow. that work you know yeah and then i went out there and i i tried to finish you know i, I finished that you know fight and then i got to the fourth round and you know he he got me and but i went out on my shield so i learned about myself you have to kill me in order to beat me because i was like you know there i'm gonna i'm gonna stay out there it, Already in the second round, I knew. Like early in the second round, when he hit me, I was like, "Oh man, something's really bad." And then during that round, I was like, "Why am I? I can taste the blood in my mouth." Yes, yeah, so I was bleeding on the inside. It's not the or orbital bone; it was the bone that holds up your eyeball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So I, right. I just like I was like, I, even at one point, the cardinal rule, as you know, as a martial artist, don't blow your nose when you get hit in the nose or the eye, right? Or right, like, right. blow up. I had to blow my nose because right. I couldn't breathe, you know. So once yeah. I blew my nose, I could barely even see out of the other other side too, you know. Oh man! So, but yeah. I said, you know what? I, I'm going out on my shield, and it is what it is. Let's let's do it. Dig deep. God will protect you. And even a, in as much pain as I was in, I I knew I had to finish the fight. I had to yeah. not give up because I don't want to ever quit on myself. So I kept going till till I was done, or until that he finished me. Yeah. So. That is inspiring, man. I sorry, All right. on. Let's, talk, let's talk about movies. Yeah, man, let's do movies. So, um, ha have have martial art films inspired you to to do anything in movies or in your training? Of course, you know I think it was uh, Bruce Lee that inspired me to uh, do martial arts. You know, and um, yeah. and of course, like Thirty Six Chambers of um, Martial Arts or Shaolin. You know, yeah, with that, I love that. Shaw Brothers. Yeah, your Shaw Brothers. Shantae. Uh, Shantae. Um, yeah. yeah, Shantae. And then Five Deadly Venoms, you know. 
Toad. Oh, I love that. You know, yeah. The lizard. <laughs> yeah. Scorpion and all that. Yeah. So snake. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, and uh, so it's it's you know martial arts is I I feel blessed that I you know became a martial artist and um uh you know I I, I thank God every day when I wake up. Nice. Yeah, I we we share uh, similar passions. Uh, Into the Dragon and the Shaw Brothers, Five Deadly Venoms. They they yeah. got me going. I I remember going to th- cinema when I was ten years old. My dad, dad took me to a double feature, uh, Into the Dragon and Jackie Chan's Big Brawl. And yeah. Jackie Chan's Big Brawl came out first. Uh, that was the first uh, show, and then uh, it was all right. But then but then the feature film Into the Dragon came on, and I was like, whoa, right? I was like unbelievable, like boxing to trapping to like, you know, spin kicks and all that stuff. I started using that stuff in my sparring and then I started learning about JKD and yeah, man. So that movie, I share the same, uh, you know, uh, motivation there. But um, I, you got a chance to work with some big names, man, like Yuan Yu Ping, Wang Kar Wai, Donnie Yen, uh, you know, pretty good fight choreographers and directors. And I just wanted to know, you know, what, what were some takeaways working with them? Like, what did you learn uh, from them about filmmaking? It's all in the details. Yeah. Like whenever you swing a sword and the impact of the sword or the drag of the sword, Master Wu Ping is like next to none with that, you know? Um, you know, I, I had a blast with Donnie Yen and I think he picked my brains as much as I picked his brains about movie fighting and right. he picked my my brains about MMA fighting, you know? So, um but then I learned. I also got a chance to work with Corey Yuan, you know, yeah, um, Corey, yep. Matt, on the mound with the Iron Fist. He he did the transporter, you know. Um, yeah, I just worked with uh, so many amazing uh, action, uh, uh, you know, uh, fight directors, and uh, Wu Ping being like being one of the tops is all about the little details. It's all about you know then uh, then um, uh, you know uh, being on Grandmaster. And mm. Wong Kar Wai, you know, um, being with Wong Kar Wai was uh, uh, like amazing. And he's all about detail, too. And it's all about, you know, um, emotion and telling the story through the look, through your eyes. This is, the, mm. you know, um, the, the, the windows to your soul, you know. Um, yeah. And you can tell that before you deliver your lines. Man, you're going to you're going to you're going you're gonna to have some people follow your the character arc. So yeah, I yeah. I learned so much from <clears throat> from from all of them and from all the actors that I've worked with too. You know, um, a lot of them you know have a lot of good and some bad things that I learned that I won't you know apply or do myself. You know, and then yeah. I've also seen some of the prima donnas out there. I'm like, I am gonna stay in my trailer. You know, so <laughs> yeah, 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 so, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about Don, Donnie Yen. Uh, like, so, like, I noticed Donnie integrating a lot of MMA in his uh, in his in his fight sequences, right? And around the time that you did Bodyguards and Assassins, so I I, I don't know. I mean, you know better than me. Like, how much of that was your influence? You know, the MMA into his into his uh, films. Uh, you know, I don't I don't think. Um, well, for that movie, you saw me do a double leg. You saw me pick him up. Right. Um, right. But like, I think he was already, he already knew, uh, and he was, you know, I think he's, he's like, he's like, he's, he's ahead of his time as an action coordinator because he was able to put it in Flashpoint. You know, he yeah, had a lot Flashpoint. of, Flashpoint. I remember that. He, yeah. he, he, he had a lot that of BJJ in there right. and stuff like that. <clears throat> but, you know, um, uh, then, then he had another one like identity where I, you know, I, I did like every time I go to Hong Kong. Uh, like you know i would hit him up and then you know we would go as you see there's uh, on like google you go go and me and him or we're standing in a restaurant with the me and my trainer uh, scott Sheely, um and my friend and then uh, donnie and his wife so we got a chance to meet you know uh, uh you know a good amount of times and and he invited me to his uh, uh monkey king uh premiere and then um right well, it, it's just a private screening for everyone and I brought like my trainer. So my trainer has been with me, you know, cause everywhere I go for the UFC doing all these stuff, you know, I was uh, fortunate enough to uh, bring, bring my trainer and, and then, you know, my trainer taking some pictures and, and then, uh, you know, uh, my trainer was like a big fan of Donnie Yen. And, you know, so, you know, I think Donnie Yen 
to me, he was always super cool, you know? Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I've never had a problem with, you know, John claude Van Damme or Donnie Yen. And, you know, even though there's like, you know, like there's little rumors out there that people say, oh, they're hard to work with or whatever. And not with me. You know, I, right, I never right. experienced it. Everyone's sure, different. You know, yeah. Everyone's going to have some good or bad things to say. But, you know, I don't care. I, I don't I don't deal with the gossip. You know, if they right. say it, if they, whatever if they had their bad experience. That, that was on them. I had a good That's experience on them, with yeah. them. Yeah, I, I had a good experience with, you know, all of them, Von Dom, you know, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, I helped them with some nutrition, all the vitamins, the food based vitamins I took, went to um, um, Whole Foods and uh, he ended up buying like eighteen hundred dollars worth of vitamins. Wow. He, paid, he paid for my vitamins when I didn't even need any. He said, get some for yourself. I said, uh, I, I already bought enough for the whole time I'm here. He's like, get some more. Yes. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get some multiple <laughs> vitamins and vitamin yeah. C for my, for my guys. He paid for it. Then he bought oh, that's nice. for, for my stunt team. And then, yeah. uh, you know, um, and, and with Donnie, you know, um, I told Donnie, Hey, I, I got to get out of here in a week. And, and then, uh, you know, and then, so we couldn't, cause we shot for, on bodyguards and assassin that, that whole yeah. fight scene. It yeah. was also a big part of what I brought to the table. Cause I said, yeah, I want to ask you about that one. Yeah. Why, why are we in fighting in like a, a fish market? 80% right. of our fight scenes indoors and 20% we run inside here while we have two and a half blocks of a real set like 1905 Hong Kong. Why are we not using yep. that? Let's get parkour. You run and you jump over all these people. Let me smash people and throw kids into the crowd. And he's like, uh, we might have problems with you throwing kids. Uh, let's, but you should talk to Peter Chen. Peter Chen's a big a big director producer out there and i was telling mm -hmm. peter hey let's let's get the scene where and as you see they they did exactly what i asked for people flying all over the place and then you see me chasing donnie right but i was like right. hey, let's have a kid fly through the air so more people right 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 me. and he peter's yep. on nope that's red tape in china right so yeah. as you see the guys flying around then then i chased donnie and and then yeah. that whole parkour scene was like yeah, I got. I'm gonna give my credit myself credit for that. That was like my idea, you know. That's and, cool, and, man. And, and yeah. Donnie ran with it. Donnie, Donnie's one of those nice guys to me at the time. I'm like, hey, you know, we're we're in this fish market. We're using bamboo, which has already been done, you know, where I slam yeah. the bamboo and then it breaks over the head and and yeah. then, uh, you block it. And then how come we're doing so much to reverse this? You know, we I'm good with kicks. You're good with kicks. How yeah. Come we're not, you know, let's do like a double leg or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's uh, I don't want to step on any toes. I, you know, it, something like this might get, you know, the fight coordinator fired him on. No, it won't. Let me talk to Peter, you know. He's like, <laughs> yeah, you talk to Peter. You you make it happen. So I put it on Peter. I said, like, uh, what do you think? And I and I thought, I remember Peter called me and said, Kung, I'm gonna meet me at, um, you know, you're, you're getting off pretty soon. I want to meet you at um, the sushi restaurant in the in your hotel. They had me at a five star hotel. And I'm like, man, I think he's gonna <laughs> fire me because I'm oh, thinking no. up about the fight scene. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, so I get there, I'm like nervous. I'm driving I'm nervous. Home. Yeah. I remember yeah. in uh, like the, the 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 minivan that was taking me back to the hotel. I was like, all these things were going yeah. in my head. Man, oh yeah. my god, my agents can be so mad. I think they're gonna fire me, right? Yeah. I, I sit down. And I'm like, like like kind of frozen. And he's like, <laughs> Kung. I'm like, yes. And he's a uh, I saw the dailies. I'm like, okay. He's like, you're right. We have to shoot it all again. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. So, what, what do you suggest we, we do? I said, well, we got two and a half blocks of 1905 Hong Kong. Let's go parkour. And he's all, what's, what's, what's parkour? I'm like, like free running and jumping. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay. I know. I know that. He's all, okay. And then um, and I'm like, let me throw, you know, kids and females. And he's all, Okay, no, you can't do that, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then next thing I know, they brought me back for a week, paid me for it. Yeah. And then yeah, and we we shot all my scenes in a week, and then of course Donnie, um, you know, yeah, he he was the second unit on that, and on our last day, me and Donnie to get it done because I had to go back to Comic Con, um, because uh, they they booked me at a bad time, and I had to go back to Comic Con, uh, to promote another movie. You know, so yeah. while I was filming that, um, our last day, Donnie's, uh, we're not going to get finished the shot. And I'm like, we still have time. And he's, uh, 
Ah, uh, I'm all just I'm I'm open to staying as long as it takes. He's like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. And next thing I know, I looked at my clock, scene after scene after scene. Twenty four yeah. hours later, we we worked for twenty four hours. Straight. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And just put it this way, it was like I, a, I had brought all day. my stuff. I brought all my stuff to yeah. the set, so yeah. I had to fly home from from the set. I got all my makeup off, and I went straight to the airport, and they flew me back. I didn't get a chance to go back to the hotel, take a shower or anything. I oh, was like, that's crazy, oh, man. man. So my wow. thank God I was on business class, but I was yeah. sticky. I was like, yeah. man, like just walking Nasty. through the airport. I'm like, Whoo, <laughs> damn, people are gonna. <laughs> not gonna like this, you know. So it was, no it was deodorants crazy. work. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I, I, uh, that's a cool story. I didn't know any of that stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's new to me. Uh, I, I love that fight scene, man. Like the, the best part I liked was the two, two things: the reveal of you, like how, how you just jumped, jumped in, and then you know the, the camera focused on you and your facial expression, and then, and then all those wide angle shots, you in the yeah. air and throwing those kicks. Really well done. So yeah, man, yeah, yeah, one yeah. of my one of my favorite films of yours. But uh, I wanted to ask you. So you got like Jet Li, Bruce Lee, uh, Donnie, um, Ikawa Weiss, and all these guys. How are you gonna be the the differentiator? What's what's your how how are you gonna differentiate yourself differentiate yourself as an Asian American actor among all of these guys? I'm not trying to you know. I'm not trying yeah. to copy them or anything. Yeah, I yeah. just uh, I'm my own person, you know. Um, yeah, I, I'm already different. I'm yeah. I'm the I'm the world champion of the group. Right, I'm the guy right, who right. represent all the Asians when I fought when I fought in uh, Strike Force for the title against Frank Shamrock, one of the one of the world's best at the time. You know, then I you know I represented you know all the Asians in UFC. You know, um, to be the main event and be the one of the first fights. To be in Macau, in you know, which is part of China, so right. um, I, I I made a lot of history myself too. But you know, um, I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone else, and yeah. I'm sure they can't take anything away from me. They can't exactly. take my titles away. So no. there, I yeah. I don't ever compare myself because you know, like God put us on this this earth, and you know what we do with our our life, what our choices are, you know, and uh, as you know, Hollywood, man, I mean from singers and look at TikTok, and so so much is being exposed right now right i mean yeah you know uh but you know I, i'm my own person and i represent god so i put myself in the best light as possible so people can see you know through me you know um anything can be possible and and then any sacrifice that i have taken uh, i do it for you know god and I do it for my family and I do it for the fighters and I do it for, you know, the parents that don't get to talk to their kids, you know, and um, the corruption that I fight against and then uh, the the monopoly that UFC has done. I, I, you know, I I represent I represent the light that shines into the dark. You know, that's yeah. me. And so my battle and my trials of life and, uh, you know, is is much greater than my own personal personal accolades that I have done. Like I look yeah. at all the wrestling titles and, and in the martial arts tournaments and everything that I've done, compare that to their titles. They, they just got movie titles that they've done. Yeah. And they got a yeah. lot of money, but who have they really helped? You know, sure. They have some, yeah. they, they have some, some, uh, you know, you know, um, nonprofit or functions that they do, but you know, I compare that. What what have yeah, I what yeah. have I done for the Asian people? What have I done for society? What have I done to fight evil? Yeah, what, yeah. And I I don't look at them. What have they done? What are they doing for other people? If something would happen, you see, there's some stars that would do something. They get out of their car, help a a stranded person in the rain or whatever. Th th those are the cool things I see. It's not about yeah. how big their movie or how much money that they got in a blockbuster movie for me. I don't, I don't care. I don't care, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I do know for a fact um, that you know it, it's all about representing the the the, the Asian people. If yeah. I can make you guys proud, because I can do. If I set my mind out to do something, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. I want a title. 
you know, I want a title and I'm, I've done some big movies. I've worked with a lot of big actors. You know, I don't, I never get starstruck. Yeah. Them, you know? Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, I became good friends with Channing, you know, I, I, I plot, yeah. the only person I'm going to geek out is if I, if I, if I'm blessed enough to see a Jesus one day, you know, you know, because you know what the yeah. Bible says, Jesus yeah. came to this earth and he was as a sheep. But when he comes back, he's coming back as a lion. Yeah. So judgment, baby. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that, that's that would geek me out. Yeah. Geek me out. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to contain my geekness for right now. I, I can't believe we're talking, man. Really, I just can't. Um, but uh, yeah, we're almost done. Up. Uh, so, this is a topic that I'm really passionate about. Uh, you know, Bruce Lee faced it in the '60s, uh, maybe even earlier. You know, racism in Hollywood, man. Um, I, I know you know about all that. So, I, I wanted to wanted to touch on that. You know, I know I know it's a big topic, but does it still exist? And how are you dealing with all that? Oh. It it's even more now. It's just the way they hide it. It's the way they portray different, yeah. you know. And and when there's enough heat on them, they they throw the Asian people a bone. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mortal Kombat's it rebooted. The whole cast is Asian, and Sang Ji is is uh, Asian um, cast, and 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 the whole nine yards. Yeah, but. Um, so was I think Robin Shu did a great job as Mortal Kombat when when right. he was you know uh, but where's he now you know um, I mean there's Asians will all always be suppressed and mm-hmm. it is what it is you got a lot of young guys up and coming but let's see where their 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 heart lies when they become a star let's see what what they can do as into tipping the balance of good and evil. You know, so uh, that that's the key. It's all about if you can shift good against evil and make good above evil, then 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 you're special. But sure, you 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 play a character. You're 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 playing a make believe character. You're acting out a character, and hopefully that character means something to some kids and makes a, a good example, so that kid could be a good role model in the future. And it's how these guys will carry themselves, you know. So that's that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at, yeah. oh wow, that's that's the new, you know, Kung Lao or whatever, <laughs> you know. Really, I mean, Kung Lao. Yeah. Even yeah. at my age, you know, that guy, for some reason, if, if if that guy was doing evil or doing something bad, he it would be the wrong person to meet in the alley. If it was me and this guy who's playing whatever character it is, right? So, yeah, you know, like like for me, it's all about what they do to shine light into the darkness. That's the key. That's what I look up to. I don't look up because they played a big part, you know, you know, uh, you know. Um, so I mean, that's just me, and I don't care what anyone else thinks. I just care yeah. about what I do for God and what I do for my family and. You know, everyone else um, can understand when when the light is shined into the darkness, you're going to be criticized, you know, and you're going to be different. And yeah. you're not yeah. you're not part of the norm because here's a sheep. I yeah, I'm the sheep dog. Yeah, I guide the sheep, you know, whether yeah. they, the sheep will never know that the sheep dog has had the back of all these sheeps what's next for you in the movie industry man that's my closing question um upcoming projects um i have an idea i just don't want to talk about it yet okay. you know yeah yeah uh, of course yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 a little bit you know top secret um okay no but worries it's uh, something that um i can be very proud of and i can look uh and m- make my kids proud and and all the asians will be proud and and, and yeah uh, man it, It'll it'll help if you are on that frequency, you'll you'll get it right away. If you're not, you have to study and you have to watch the movie over and over and over and over again, and then yeah. and then you might get it. Then then it, it it'll make people question if that's yeah. right or not, and what's gonna happen when they question. What are they gonna have to do? They're gonna have to open up a book. I won't say what book 
but they're gonna yeah. have to open the book to figure it out. And that's what that's that's the goal of this movie. Yeah. Open wow. up that book, people. Read yeah. God's words. Yeah. So. Amazing, man. Oh, I can't wait. I've been a huge fan. My my uh, my friends that are going to find out eventually that once I post this, they're going to be so happy that we we t- we talked. I'm really grateful, brother, for, for your time. Appreciate everything, man. Um, sure. Yeah, United I'm, we stand, right? You know, United yeah, we stand. Yeah, man. And-